<laughs> I use these for basically scribbling down any little idea that comes to my head. In the middle of the night, I'll just get up and draw a little thumbnail sometimes. You know, these don't, they don't really take much time. These things I can, they're little doodles, they're little pencil doodly things, basically just to remind myself of a thought or an idea that I had. Because, you know, I'll do this and then I'll forget about it. And then six months down the line when I'm looking for something to draw or paint, and I'm not quite sure where I want to go with it, I'll start digging through this book and I'll find gems. I'll find little things that I can turn into paintings. This is, oh, this is, let's see, probably around three years old because... I've got notes in here about Descants and Cadences, which was my art book that I did in 2016. You can see here, these were some of the concepts that I was thinking about for a group gallery show. This was in Scotland, I believe, and I had about seven, eight pieces that were a part of that show. And so when I'm working on a gallery exhibition and I have a number of pieces to work on to paint, I start by just doing these little mini doodles. Like I said, they take almost no time at all. And it's just trying to get my thoughts in order. And I start posing questions for myself and writing down little phrases like this over here, the value of a pearl, which became the title of a piece. I start writing just random words even and use those as associations. So tangled, thorns, briars, uh, you know, I had this idea of elaborate headdresses. Where you only see the, the top portion of a face and, and above it you see this tangle of briars and thorns, which is a theme actually that you probably, if you're familiar with my artwork, then you may have noticed that in various places because it is a theme that I decided to run with actually and work on for several paintings. Here's another variation of that theme. Uh, this was actually turned into a painting at some point, too. Unafraid of brambles, unafraid of thorns. I was trying to decide on a title. And, in fact, the little little hummingbird, that's what this is, in case you can't tell. <laughs> that's, that's a little hummingbird up there. And it became the focus of a painting all on its own, which was one of the pieces in the Descans and Cadence book, in fact. Now, what else have I got here? So these were some ideas that I submitted to Pollinator Partnership one, of the, one year for, I think that the theme for that was, um, what was it, trees for bees or something like that. <laughs> Each year they have a different theme. The year that I ended up illustrating was the Monarch Highway. Which... I was really excited about, had a ton of fun with, but these were for the previous year submissions, which they did not go with, but it was a number of tree concepts along with these. I kind of like them. And in fact, these might make their way into other kinds of work or paintings. I mean, this I could still see as a piece that I might approach at some point. We have the, this is just a horizon line with the silhouettes of trees up above and the tendrils of plants and leaves and botanical, uh, botanically depicted items down here and a bee. So this is, this is a composition that I might like going back to at some point. This is what I'm talking about with, with my sketchbooks. They are treasure troves of ideas, of forgotten ideas that might resurface at some point and be turned into other paintings. Let's see, that's a bunch of scribbled notes. Sometimes I just use it as a notebook. Now oh, this was, this was the start of, what was I thinking about this one? This one was the start of a brainstorm session for 
a Crab Jab Studio Gallery show exhibition. And for the Crab Jab shows, I did about 30 pieces for each of those shows. And so I needed something that I could really run with. And I wasn't sure what the theme was yet, but here again, I start going through my word associations and phrases, things that appealed to me and things that were going through my head at the time. This was, I was still really in interested in the Insecta series. And so this is a, a leaf bug and the title over here I was thinking is just another leaf. And you could see some of the notes I said, uh, you know, perhaps faces in the leaves or some of the other possible titles and phrases I was thinking of was invisible leaf or you do not see me or I am unseen or conversely, I am the unseen or I am the seen what grows much must fade. I had also this fish <laughs> idea, this sort of surreal combination of uh, juxtaposed reality which did also again eventually make its way into what was my haven gallery show that was the um, where the sea meets the sky although these were these were kind of the early concepts and the early thoughts that I had on the subject this juxtaposition of two worlds and the boundaries and and where those how, how those boundaries then define the world that you exist in, the world that you choose to see, and the world that you perceive. I had at first sort of this Victorian concept of it, though. Again, it is something I do like and I might revisit at some point. Other little scribbly sketches. This is this was the first thumbnail where I started to play with the idea of the the ocean juxtaposed with uh, my trees, and where there's just this kind of very surreal element of how they are just all combined, and and the tree and the sky and the ground and the ocean is all intermingled into one painting. And I have this tree here with the moon up above and little fishies swimming around. Yes, those are little fish. Can you tell that? <laughs> As I said, these are very rough. Here again, I'm going for more close up, zoomed in tight to faces. This is a conflict that I have because I really enjoy doing pulled out landscapes. I love doing these grand scenes where you can see the forests and the trees and the sky and, and all of that. And I also really love doing these really tight, close in portraits, cropped features, cropped faces, you know, where these, you have only these portions of the face that can, that can be seen, not even the whole of the face. And these, these, these super enlarged insects and things. And so I constantly struggle with how I get to appeal to both of these sensibilities that I have, this desire to create the grandiose as well as the intimate in one painting, in one image. And I, instead of doing it in one painting, I frequently go back and forth. I'll do one, one image as one type of viewpoint and the other one you know going in the other way this was an attempt to combine the two where i have this grand portal and it is this this scene this uh, pulled out scene but you also have this dragonfly juxtaposed directly on top of that where they are part of a whole and here I have actually notes on how I want to actually approach this painting because in this one I had actually a fairly good idea in mind of how I want the piece to look and I was starting to think of the colors as well. I wanted the blue clouded sky to fade into the wings of the dragonfly. Here I'm still playing with that Victorian concept.
Oh, and this, <laughs> this, this is dress designs. All kinds of random things that get tossed into my sketchbook notebooks. <laughs> I like to sew. I like to sew dresses for myself. So <laughs> that's what this is about. I was figuring something. All right, here's more planning on what is this? This is planning on my Crab Jab gallery show. This is where I started to figure out what the exact images that I wanted to have showcased in the gallery were going to be. And this was the very first, the very first incarnation of what eventually became the series of laser cut paintings in my unraveling series. Um, and it was this idea of unraveling and potential and deconstruction versus creation and how this thread runs through all of these pieces. And in fact, in fact, I initially had the thought of a literal thread actually connecting these and then more of a, a figurative one or a, a very designed one made out of some either 3D printed and then laser later on I moved into the laser cut realm and then the thread itself was discarded as a actual concept and and turned it more into just the way the paintings flowed one into the other that was the figurative thread that was running through them all and creating this spiral pattern but if you can believe it that was how it all started out It was this little scribble that was the first little spark of that concept. And that's how a lot of my pieces start with what barely even you can, what you can barely even tell is a, going to be a painting. And these were some more concepts and ideas that went into that more dress stuff oh yeah and this was one of my favorite quotes from Alice in Wonderland actually no it's not Alice in Wonderland it's through the looking glass it's the white queen and I've done a painting based on this quote too impossible things I'm just 101 five months and a day I can't believe that said Alice can't you said the queen in a pitying tone try again Draw a long breath. Shut your eyes. Alice laughed. There's no use trying, she said. One can't believe impossible things. I dare say you haven't had much practice, said the queen. When I was your age, I always did it for half an hour a day. Why, sometimes I've believed as many as six impossible things before breakfast. <laughs> it's a very silly little quote, but it was one of the ones that always stood out for me and I, I enjoyed that one. Okay, what is else is here? This is still working on that Crab Jab show. 30 pieces is a lot of paintings. And these were the foxes. This was one of my favorite pieces from that show because I was, I just went and indulged myself and I painted lots and lots of foxes, little white romping critters causing trouble <laughs> incarnations of entropy <laughs> i think that they run through my house constantly incarnations of entropy that is <laughs> and this is the form that they take oh and here we move on to the haven show that followed the crab chap one where I moved on to the birds, the sea, where the sea meets the sky. And this was one of the large paintings. The initial title for it was called Reversal. But what I wanted to have here, the idea that I was working with was that the fish swimming through the sky and the birds were flying through the water. So this total inversion of where they should exist, where they are supposed to be, what is perceived as reality and what is reality.
Here's the initial sketch for entertaining the daydream. Which was sort of the signature piece for that show. And this one was a concept that made it partway through a painting and then I disliked the composition. And so it, it never was finished, which is actually a very rare thing for me. Most of my paintings see completion, whether I like them or not. And then I decide once I'm done whether I like them or not, because I've learned that frequently when I am in the middle of painting something, I dislike the painting. <laughs> it always goes through a part, a phase where I hate it. I dislike it and I want to quit. I want to just toss it aside and I have to make myself not do that because frequently the pieces that I most want to do that to end up being some of the best ones. But this is one of the few that did not make it through the process. And the initial title of that was No Man is an Island, but perhaps some fish are. <laughs> the fish here, you see, you get it? <laughs> the fish is the island. Okay, I'm gonna discard that. Let's move on from that one. <laughs> I think that was a good idea to leave behind. But this one was another piece that I did not like also. I did finish that one. And actually I ended up liking it when it was done. <laughs> but it didn't make it into the show because the, the gallery show, what I ended up doing was all my pieces became laser cut frames and they were all either round or curved, and this did not fit into that format any longer once I had decided on that mode of display because this is a rectangle, this is a rectangular piece, and so it was not going to be able to play with all those others. This was the first incarnation of the blue below and the blue above. And the uh, original concept was to have the blue below, which was the fish, kind of flowing upward in this swirly spiral armed thing through one of these pieces. This other piece, which was moving through spaces between. That was actually what this got turned into once it got reimagined as a round piece instead of the original rectangular shape and dimensions that I had. It flows up through that and then out into the blue above. Which is the phoenix piece. And yeah, I'm still sort of caught in that Victorian imagery here. Although again, this did not, this did not suit and did not meld with the rest of the pieces. Here's one that hasn't yet made its way into a complete painting. It's called Surging Tides. At least the sketch is called Surging Tides. That's a, that's got potential still. It might still make it somewhere. This little scribble made it into a mid-sized painting. Uh, this one was Wave Walker. This was also part of the Haven show. And lots of random notes. Oh yeah, this was me trying to put into words my thoughts about the Where the Sea Meets the Sky show and trying to trying to wrap actual words around these visual concepts, which is sometimes one of the hardest things about creating art, being able to talk about it. But it's important, and it's important to understand your own thought process about it and to know where your images are coming from and what they are connecting to for yourself and for your audience. Oh, and here is the very first little scribble for succulent dragons. That's a little Haworthia hoarder.
And now, now we're getting into some recent things. Oh, let's see, some mermaid stuff. Because I have a couple of group shows coming up in the next month or two. One of them is called Mermaid, and it's going to be at Modern Eden. So this was the sketch that I came up for that. These were some of the other possibilities for the Mermaid group show. But this is the one I finally settled on. And that brings us up to the present. A few more blank pages in here. Some not so blank pages. <laughs> so there we go. There's a little tour through my sketchbook. A look at my little scribblings.